What's up, Buffalo? It's your boy Haas, owner of Lee and Lee's Love Lifestyle Inspiration Clothing. And I want to make a big announcement. This is just for Buffalo. I'm opening my first flagship retail store out of this shipping container on Black Friday, November 27, 2015. And before we open the store on Black Friday, it's a secret location, I'm doing a huge blowout sale. You know, this is the first time I'm ever doing anything, first and last time I'm ever doing anything like this. This is gonna be my, my flagship store, the first, the first of many, hopefully. Love Lifestyle Inspiration, peace. What's up guys? This is another story time. I wanna tell the story today about how I thought about something, did research, created, and then ran the business for two years and then sold the business. And that business was the Lee and Leah dream box. It was a bunch of different names, <laughs> but I'll just say it started off as the Lee and Leah swag box. And just a quick glimpse of what it was. I had an idea of a container store that could move from place to place in order to sell merchandise to give kids an epic experience. So the proceeds would go to helping kids have an epic experience, right? So I wanted to build this shipping container store. It was the only viable thing that I could see that could actually do what I needed it to do for my vision, okay? So we'll start in 2012, okay? We'll start in 2012. I started Project Swag. I'm in the beginning stages of Project Swag. I meet a young kid that has cancer. His name is Jason. He tells me his story. I bring his second favorite uh, hockey player to his house to surprise him. We create this episode where we raise money for the kid. It's a format. We, we raise money for the kid, brought a NHL player to his house, took him out, it took him out with the NHL player to hang out at Dave and Buster's, took him to the game where he has VIP access. And then we swagged over his room, right? A Buffalo Sabres theme and I worked with the Buffalo Sabres organization to do all of this and then I go on to other kids and then I meet these two kids in New York City named Julio and Jordan. Julio was battling Hodgkin's lymphoma and Jordan was battling uh, sarcoma which is a leg cancer okay my goal for Julio was to have him meet Derek Jeter and have dinner with Derek Jeter in the middle of Yankee Stadium. Lofty, big dream, you know, for that to happen for Julio, okay? Let me stop real fast. If you're not dreaming big and you're not scared of the dreams that you have, restart. Because you have to set the big dream first and shoot a moonshot, okay? You might hit a star. <laughs> so that's what I wanted for Julio. For Jordan, he was a dancer. He used to perform at his school and he loved the Jabberwockies and the Super Crew. So I set on this mission to try to help Jordan go to Las Vegas and dance with the Jabberwockies. Hey, what's up? We're the Jabberwockies crew, and we're working on something very special with Hasadiq and Project Swag. With Project Swag, we wanted to do something epic and bring Jordan and his family out to Vegas because uh, we have something very special uh, for him and his family. What does all of this have to do with the container store? What does this all have to do with business? It's all business because all of these things is something called cause marketing in order to sell your product to your customer, okay? Many different types of marketing. This specifically is cause marketing, okay? It's a cause 
for my clients or customers that are interested in supporting a cause to buy my products. Okay. Cause marketing. So on this journey to help these kids, Jordan, Jordan, Julio do this, Jordan gets sick again. And when I met him, he was perfectly fine, but he winds up getting sick again. But in the meantime, I'm having this idea about building this container store. Now I'm doing research, but what's happening is everybody thinks I'm crazy. Everybody thinks I'm crazy for saying, Hey, I want to put a store in a shipping container. I want to build it out. It looks like this. And I want to take this container store and move it around. So if Jordan is in Long Island, we bring the store to Long Island and we do promotion and we run, get news to cover it and we sell out in order to help him go to Vegas to meet the Jabberwocky. So I'm having this idea, but no one is receptive to the idea. I try to do like Kickstarter campaigns. We're trying to raise $10,000 to build our first portable Liam Leo retail store out of shipping containers. A lot of cool things about shipping container structures. For one, we're building out of something that's recycled. And I can't raise any money. I even take my daughters to local news stations and we talk about this idea and we get nothing. So what do I do? I do it on my own. So I'm building this clothing company. So I'm doing, I'm doing little things. I'm doing like straight out of Buffalo t-shirts. I'm doing these different t-shirts, love t-shirts, and I'm making money. I'm also driving a taxi as well. <laughs> All of this while my daughters are living with me, I'm a single father. Okay. And I find a container. I've done enough research. I see that this is viable. I find a container. I buy a container for $2,000, a 20 foot container. And I put this container at my grandmother's house in the driveway. And at this point, I don't know anything how to build. I couldn't build a shelf at this time. And then I met a guy named Greg Fisher and I tell him about the idea. And this is all a part of networking. This is all a part of getting people to buy in to anything that I envision. Okay. That's a part of business is getting people excited about your ideas. And I was always able to do that. Whether it was swag university, which I talked about on the last story time episode, whether it is all dreams, whether it's this container store, whether it was dose storm records, I've always been able to get people excited and rallied around the vision that I have. So Greg Fisher is a builder. He's an artist as well. He works in theater and he was amazing. When I say amazing, he was an amazing artist. And I tell him about, you know, what I want to do. And he said, let's build it. So most of the things that we, that we purchased for the container store was like at secondhand hardware stores, like the window. We bought this huge window at a second hand hardware store. Um, the two by fours, all of that. We were going to home Depot every single day. We paid full price for that. The flooring, all secondhand hardware stores, um, things like insulation. We weren't able to do that, but all of this probably took to build from December of 2015 
and we completed it in April of 2016. So in between that, it probably could have been, it probably could have been faster, honestly, but in Buffalo, the winter and things like that. And then also every single time, like I had to pay uh, uh, Fisher money. So I'm working to give money to him for my vision. Okay. Ultimately, the complete cost of the project, I would say was about $20,000. Everything included paying Greg Fisher, all of the materials, the container, we're like $20,000 in. Okay. Um, now <laughs> here's the thing as well, right? So people, we did all of this without a building permit. So we're gorilla, <laughs> we're gorilla building inside of this container in a residential neighborhood and we're just doing it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say in downtown Buffalo. So if anyone wants to do in a, a container store, I'm going to say, don't do it that way. Okay. Because you can get in trouble. I had no foresight about what I was doing. Like none. This is something I had a vision for. I seen people, I seen this, this thing called uh box park in London and they had like 150 uh 40 foot containers that they made shops and i'm like okay this can be done so we complete the project and of course i'll lay over videos this is all documented i made sure i documented the complete process and now that the container is done what do you do what do you do with the container you try to get it permitted so first thing i did was i went to city hall in buffalo and i was asking them how can i get my container permitted because not just is it a container but it has a story with the container what we're doing with the container we're helping kids achieve dreams and epic experiences by part of the proceeds from our clothing that is in the container so it's a great cause and it's unique no one has one in the city right so i go to city hall and the guy never comes out of the back the guy that could help me go about getting it permitted he sends the receptionist out she says well he says that you have to be an architect to do this never comes out at this time i'm already fed up with the city of buffalo because of everything that happened go check another video the nepotism video go check that so i'm already on the outs of the city of buffalo anyway so now you're i can't make a living <laughs> right because this is my living this is my business and you don't want to help me do that so what do i do i take my container down to atlanta georgia and the best thing that i could have done for this business and i paid $1,500 at the time to put it on a truck and have the guy take it down to a storage unit in Atlanta. So we wrap it up plastic for, so the window doesn't get busted. I even had a guy come paint Lee and Leo on the back in graffiti. This was an exciting time. It was a very, very exciting time. I must mention one thing. That container must have moved five different times to different places to store the container because it was a time where it had to leave the residential area in my grandmother's uh, uh, parking, you know, her, her driveway. It had to leave there. Then it went to around my mother's house. It had to leave there. Then it went to another storage place. It had to leave there. So it, it moved around a lot. It moved around a lot, but I never wavered on my vision of what it could be in what I wanted to do with the container. Okay. What I was seeing at the time is that this thing could be moved around. I was seeing that the only problem was the electric. How do we hook up the electric 
because it had a you know we, we put an electric box on the container where the electric was ran through where it could be hooked up to main electric or in in any city okay um how do you do that for a short term uh type of situation i didn't know at the time so i took the container down to atlanta and i'm like okay so now what is the next step i have to learn everything as i'm going along the container is in storage and the first thing i do is i go to the city of atlanta to building and tell them about my project okay and when i tell them about my project they say you need this 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 and this in order to get this store permitted okay and i'm going to tell you what the this this that this 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 and that is but let me tell you about location scouting because that was a very intricate part of course i'm really really excited about getting this store up and going so i'm driving all around atlanta to find the best place for this container and i find several places some is not hitting me back but i found this gas station downtown atlanta which would have been perfect so it's on marietta street right downtown and it was a lady that was working like a car wash at the time and i'm like hey I want to put this container store right here and I show her the you know the pictures and everything so she gives me the guy's number who owns the car wash and I call him and I pitch him the idea and meanwhile I pitch another guy and I the idea as well and his name is Morris Habif and he owned the building that was right next to that car wash okay I actually called Morris Habit first before I called the guy from the car wash because I called Morris Habit to ask if he owned the car wash, okay? And Morris Habit said he didn't own the car wash, but he owned these parking lots across the street. And immediately when I told him about the idea, he says, yo, this is a great idea. If that doesn't work out with the car wash, call me back. I might have a place for you to put it the guy from the car was declined he said no he didn't want to do it he didn't want to do it so I called Morris Habif back and he says okay I have these two parking lots across the street and really it was just the perfect situation so I go in talk to Morris Habif about it I bring a presentation about what I'm doing because again, this is not just a container store just for profit and we're just putting things and this is a business to help people, but also profit at the same time, which is the businesses that I like to do. I like to help people and make money. That match right there is perfect for me, okay? That's what I like and I like to market through cause marketing, through telling stories of the cause to market to my customers. So I go take this presentation to Morris Habif and he says, hey, man, this is a visionary idea. This is a visionary idea. You are a visionary. He gives me more confidence in my vision and what I'm doing, okay? Now, meanwhile, again, I have to get money to do all of these things because me and Morris, we strike a deal. $1,500 for two parking spaces like curbside anybody that's walking towards the mercedes-benz stadium that was getting built will pass the container store businesses that are next to uh the container store as well walking towards centennial park it's actually in the centennial district and if you don't know centennial park is where the 1996 Atlanta uh, Olympics were held in Atlanta. Okay. Very prominent area. When someone goes to Atlanta, guess where they go? To Centennial Park. Guess what they're probably going to pass if they park a little bit down the street? My shipping container store. Okay. So <laughs> Morris Haver says, yes, we have a spot for the container. So we move it 
to the other parking lot just for, you know, for his there, but I have to go get the permits, but I, it's $1,500 a month. So look, and this is how much of an entrepreneur I am. I would rather pay $1,500 a month and live in my friend's basement for $300 a month rather than pay $1,500 a month for an apartment and not have a business and drive Uber. No, I would rather build a business. Okay. Rather build a business, rather sacrifice and build a business, have discomfort for eventual comfort. Okay. And that's what I was doing. So I'm driving Uber every single day, eight, 10 hours a day, almost like go hundred, hundred, hundred fifty dollars per day to make so we can get this container store going. And that's what I'm doing, right? So I'm driving Uber. I'm living in my friend's basement for $300. I'll put a picture of living in his basement. This was my setup on an air mattress in order to get this container store going. So permits, I'm going back and forth to um, the, the building department in Atlanta and City Hall. They tell me I need a builder's permit, right? In order to move it, to put it in place or whatever. And I need architectural plans and I need an inspection in order to hook the electric and everything up to the city. Okay. How do I get architectural plans? At the time, I didn't know. The paperwork to fill out was very daunting in order to be able to get the builder's permit to move it to the location. And FYI, like, look, I had, so it was, it needed like, like groundwork to be done. And I didn't have the money to do the groundwork. So I had some Mexican guys come and this was, um, don't do this. <laughs> really don't do this. I had some Mexican guys come and they dig out the area so the container can fit exactly where it was supposed to fit and it was stable. So it was like a platform or whatever. So the container could fit in this place. The loophole that I use is that the container was built as is. So we didn't have to do, that's the loophole that was used in the building permit process. Other than that, uh, all of the things would have been, had to be inspected. The electric, the, um, the framework, the window, all of that would have, would have had to have been inspected if it wasn't built as is. And I've had architects coming to my business and say, how did you get this permitted here? And that was how it was built as is. So that actually helped me skip a complete step that would have been very, very strenuous that most people have to do in order to get one of those permitted because it's not easy. Okay. So that was a loophole that I use in order to get it where it was at in that area Centennial district, right? Just prime, prime real estate. Okay football games everybody's passing i mean it was just prime real estate so we got it permitted i opened a store maybe like august and man it was such an accomplishment for me It was such an accomplishment. One of my biggest accomplishments ever to start it with an idea in 2012, to build it in 2016. Um, in that same time, my dad passed away. Like, you know, that was another reason I was down there and he never seen it. Before my grandmother passed away, she actually came to see the store. Um, it was just, it was a great time but it was also a hard time because that cause marketing stuff was not really working 
at the time. And I had, uh, I was on the news in Atlanta. Local company is using profits from the sale of t-shirts to offer kids with life-threatening illnesses a chance to fulfill their dreams. Channel 2's Darren Moore met with a man in downtown Atlanta who offers an epic adventure for children he meets. We make a customized elephant for them. Hasadik tells the story of kids with life-threatening illnesses like Jarrell Jones from Stone Mountain. And, um, you know, I was trying to do things. I was trying to do business. I'm only one person. And we were selling shirts. So, you know, we were paying. You know, we were paying Morris. But it wasn't what I envisioned. I envisioned for this to make $10,000 $10, per month. And we just was not getting there. You know, we just were was not getting there. I'm filming. I had purchased uh, film equipment. I even purchased uh, a screen printing machine because I'm like, okay, that's another way that we can build revenue as well. So we had a screen printer. So I was doing screen printing jobs, doing content, and also selling our brand label as well. So um, I was doing it. I was doing it. Next thing I know, Chick-fil-A has a container store near the uh, Ferris wheel. So it's, it's trending, it's trending. Now we're in 2018, a guy walks into my container store and he says, how did you do this? Can you build me one? I said, of course, it's gonna cost you this much. That fast, and we, I, was, I was so crunched for money. <laughs> I swear I was so crunched for money because I had a girlfriend at the time and I was so crushed for money and the guy cuts me a $10,000 check up front in order to build a, a container cafe for him on his land, which I did. And I'll show you some of the video from that. But back to the permitting process or whatever, I'm sorry, I skipped. I skipped the whole beat, but yeah, so I got the thing, I got it permitted. Now the architectural plans, that's where I was at. So we had the builder's permit. I had, before I completed the builder's permit, I had to get the arch, architectural plans. So before, <clears throat> so now, now that we have the, how it's going to be permitted, we have to permit it as is. And guess what? I had help with that, with the people from the uh the city, uh, city of atlanta they helped me by you know by telling me how to do that okay the as is thing as built i believe it was called and um without that i would have never been able to get it permitted because i just didn't have the money in order to build a platform and all of those things and and, and go through that process that a normal um construction company would do i just didn't i just uh, like i'm a, i was a solopreneur so the as built now i have to get the architectural plans when i get the architectural plans then i can go and get it inspected in order to hook up the electric to the city and i went got an architect and i paid the architect um eighteen hundred dollars for the architectural plans and he did the architectural plans maybe in like so he comes does the measurements and all of that stuff he does the architectural plans within maybe a week or two so i have the architectural plans i take everything the full package down to the city of atlanta to the builders uh office and they set up the appointment for me to get the inspection the inspector guy comes the one thing i love about atlanta is it's all black it's all black and they're there they're there to help you they love black business and that's why i love atlanta this is my experience like no way i get this done in buffalo as you've seen <clears throat> as you heard in the story that the guy wouldn't even come outside it would have never happened in buffalo so all of these black people helped a black man in atlanta to start his business right the inspector comes, it's a black guy, and goes through everything, gives the okay, yo, signs off on it, everything looks good. And I was so nervous, because he had to go through the electric, 
all of that, man. He had to go through everything. And man, I was so nervous that day. Man, when he signed off on that, you don't know how happy I was, man. That was such an exciting day. Got the permit, and now I scheduled for Georgia Power to come out to, to, to run the electric. And once the electric was ran, the lights could come on, and we are in business. We are in business. Such an exciting time, man. As you, I, I can still feel it to this day. What I noticed that I was not going to be able to do was move this thing around. That wasn't going to happen. And meanwhile, in 2014, Jordan actually had passed away. So that had gave me more fuel. And that's why 2016, I was like, yo, we're building this shit. We're building this shit. We don't have time to wait. Nobody won't help us. I'm driving a taxi. I'm making, I'm making campaigns to get it done because I believed in it. And that's what I did. Fast forward to 2017, we're permitted. We go 2017, we go 2018, we're doing business. I'm doing content. I'm living a dream. Got my drone flying all, all, all over the guys in the neighborhood. I know everybody in the neighborhood and I have this business. It was just one guy named Tony that was actually leasing a lot from Morris Habeff that was always bothering me, wanted to buy the container because the big, the big payout was going to be for the Super Bowl that was coming in 2019, I believe. Yeah, that's when the Super Bowl was coming in 2019. So that was going to be when, yo, I was gonna make a ton of money so let's round up and fast forward to everything that I've done. First thing, found the location, leased the location, got the permits, started running the business, multiple people coming in asking, how did I do it? I would give free information. Um, still, this is a novelty. Built the, the cafe for that guy with his business still running business and i thought we were going to be making ten thousand dollars per month with this business and it wasn't and if i was to do it over again i would know that it's going to take more time in order to build this business so i would get geared up for that i had a lot of different pressures going on with things in my life and Ultimately, it came to a point where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Super Bowl and while that Super Bowl thing is attractive, let's see if I can sell this business. Let's see if we can sell it. And I put a for sale sign out there and I really didn't get any, um, any bites from it. Privately, people reached out to me and I had a bunch of people that wanted it okay they wanted it and they started putting bids in for it and that's how I come to selling and exiting something that was an idea in 2012 to selling it in July of 2018 I remember July 2018 Contract selling for the sale of the container these are the buyers um, still kind of kind of emotional for me. Um, one thing that I did not mention about the container store, that's one of the most important parts of the story of this container store is that me and my daughters were doing this together. At this time in my life, I was a single father of my two oldest daughters, London and Savannah, and we were building this thing together. They were painting shelves, Everything that we were doing in this business, we were doing together. Like the can the, the the Kickstarter Indiegogo campaign, we were doing together, sitting on a couch saying, look, this is our business. We're trying to raise money. This is what we're trying to do. Going on to news and media outlets, doing interviews, 
And after my dad passed away, I never got my daughters back to come to, to Atlanta. And having that business was never the same. So that same connection to the business, I didn't really have anymore because that was where it started from. It started from me and my daughters building this business together. And that's what I always wanted was for us to build our business together, teaching them how to film, teaching them how to print t-shirts, dry t-shirts, all of these different things, even design t-shirts, even design and different things and even selling. Like I had them giving flyers door to door about our business, pop-up shops about our business, all doing this together as a family, me and my girls. So when it was time to exit the business, which I didn't even know that I was doing, that I created something that could be sold. Didn't even know that I was doing that. I was attached to it, but I wasn't attached to it because that's what I envisioned the business to be. I envisioned the business to be our business together, building and maybe doing more and duplicating it all over. So I sold the business. I sold, I sold the business. So this is it, y'all. Packing my stuff up. <sighs> moving out, moving out. So, today is Sunday, August 5th. I sold the container uh, last week. So, today I have to move all of my stuff out. And I made money throughout the entire time, right, of running the business. That's what happens when you sell a business. So that's the good part. And then you sell it and hopefully you sell it for more. I did. I sold it for more than what I even built it for. Win-win. Win-win. But that's the container story. How far ahead of everybody was I? very very far ahead of everybody that was circa 2016 permitted 2017 run the business all the way to july 2018 okay it's 2024 places that i inquired about as locations as like pont city market in 2024 now have container stores and I can show you in video. You know, I got to get some film on this right here. Container stores. It's 2024. I got my container store permitted in 2017. Uh, can't be eight. I can't be eight years ahead of everybody. But it looks like I am. Sweet though. Look, here we here we here we go again. Listen, so I'm telling you, I was eight years ahead of ahead of this trend. Container store, another one right here, right in the belt line. This is amazing. Right, yo, so timing, so so timing is everything, right? Timing is everything. Um obviously my timing wasn't right because obviously I could have been I could have been manufacturing these, building these for companies, and also having my own and getting my own container shops permitted in the belt line. Imagine, I can't imagine how much money this thing makes right here. So I was how many years ahead? <laughs> many. So you might not be able to see it, but the container store is right down there, right there 
right right down there this is marietta street right here and this right here is centennial park right this right here is centennial park it's beautiful look at it so you have the ferris wheel this is where they had the the olympics um cere uh, opening ceremonies at here in centennial park this was built for the olympics in 1996 and so again the can my i put i placed my container shop right down there yeah, this is where i used to spend a lot of my time <laughs> building my business and um it looks so much different i was the first person to get it permitted here in downtown atlanta in centennial district and in 2018 in july 2018 yeah 2018 in july i sold it and look it's still here it's crazy that i built this i want to see what's in it this is my old shop right here that i got permitted to put in here and they still running the business out of here which is which is really really good um it's dope man it's like a vape shop they got all drinks and everything you know what i'm saying but man that's pretty cool to, to see that it's still here and still making somebody some money pretty cool to see my shop still here doesn't necessarily look like a shipping can no more because they put the put put stuff around it you know what i'm saying but yeah all of this i did i did all of this did this right here that right there had to get the uh the permits to get the to get it the electric ran uh through the city um man it's crazy <laughs> my first exit <laughs> but yeah <clears throat> cool. man so that's a heck of a story right there right moving forward in 2024, is a container store a good business? Absolutely. Why? First thing is gonna be easier to get it permitted, right? Because now it's not a novelty. Now it's out there. Why would you lease a place? If you're doing a small little business, small little shop or something like that, why lease a place, build out that place and then at some point have to leave with a container store you can do it for less build it build out your your shop and it's yours you own it and if it doesn't work out with the location where you're at you can always move it to another place i still think it's a good business i still think it's a great business to have a container shop if you want to do a small shop it's not that much investment in order to do it Prices of containers have risen, um, but I still think it's a good business. And if anyone would like to consult me about how to do it, you can. Because remember, I took an idea and I took that idea from one city that I built it in to another city, got it permitted, ran the business, and then I exited the business. And that's my story of how I exited my first business. And hopefully one day we'll exit another business called All Dreams, maybe 10 years from now. Thank you for watching. This is another, this is another story time, and I hope you learned something from this process if you didn't learn anything technical you didn't learn anything about the process you learn resilience because that's what it takes in business peace